Hey everybody, it's me, Knight. Um, I know I haven't posted a video in a while, um, so I'm here to remedy, remedy that, of course. So, let's get started. I, now, as you will see up in the title, this is the review of Knight of Champions from the WWE pay-per-view. Because I just finished watching it, oh, I want to say about 45 minutes ago. Um, main reason why I didn't record then, get it so, as fresh as possible in my brain. Uh, football game. It was happening at the same time. So, yeah. It's kind of the thing. Anyway, the game's still going, but my team's losing, so I don't really care anymore. Um, anyway, back to Night of Champions. Uh, this review is... The pay-per-view itself wasn't bad. It was rather decent, in fact. Um, I don't think it was on par with SummerSlam, but then again, SummerSlam was an extra hour, and it didn't have any big matches outside of Rollins versus Sting. I don't know, like, that one, that should have been WrestleMania, <laughs> um, 31, not Triple H versus Sting, that was still kind of a weird one but um anyway that's a whole different subject to talk about um i'm here to tell you wh all the spoilers to it all who won who lost how it went um and review each match so we'll start off with the kickoff match which was the cosmic wasteland of cody rhodes being stardust um and the ascension because they're now a stable. I don't understand this one. Um, they took on Neville and the Lucha Dragons. Um, this match was rather good, actually. It was nice and entertaining. It was a nice start. Um, although the Ascension are the, probably the most boring tag team I've seen in the last 10 years. I don't know why they they use this gimmick. This gimmick is not that great for them. Um, they need to redo the gimmick or re. They need to redo it. it. Something's wrong. Ever since they went from NXT to the WWE when they moved up, they have been just bland. They're just flat out bland. Um, maybe this whole cosmic wasteland thing will help them. Um. Stardust is obviously doing a lot better in his gimmick. And, of course, Neville being a superhero kind of character, uh, tag-teaming with the Lucha Dragons, which, honestly, the Lucha Dragons are probably the only team that I'm wondering why. <laughs> um, I guess they just didn't have any idea. <laughs> like, who should tag-team with Neville? And, honestly, what they need to do is get a superhero-style tag-team, similar to that of Hurricane and Rosie back in what, 10 years ago, um, and roll with that idea is a fact if they're going to make Neville kind of a superhero kind of character and start us as a super villain type character. It needs to, if they're going to have stables, they need to really work on this because Lucha Dragons are not necessarily superheroes right now, um, nor should they ever be pegged as superheroes. Um, Anyway, the match was solid. Um, there was a lot of close calls, but in the end, uh, Cosmic Wasteland won, uh, mainly because Stardust pushed his, I think it was Victor, from the Ascension into uh, Neville, who was about to do his Red Arrow, and uh, when Neville went down, Stardust was able to do his Queen's Crossbow or what was once called the crossroads. Um, so, yeah, they won one, two, three, clean. So it was not a bad way to start off Night of Champions. Um, the match could have been better built, though. I mean, this this match was really good. I don't understand why they have kickoff matches, though. 
I know they've always had these since the 90s. And sorry, my nose is itching. I don't know why. My, oh. um, I don't know why they have these matches. The the kickoff matches were something that they did in the 90, late 90s. And they just kept going with that. I'm not sure. Like It used to be part of Sunday Night Heat when they were getting ready for the pay-per-views. And then they stopped doing Sunday Night Heat. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's just a weird thing. Kickoff matches are nice, and usually they're kind of one of the better matches of the night. But no one's really in the crowd to see it. Um, so it seems a waste of time to have a good possibility of a match. Even title matches have gone into kickoff show. And really there's nobody in the crowd, or not everybody's in the crowd, to see it. It seems like a waste of time. I don't. I don't get it. I, I guess when you're at the when you watch it from the WWE Network, it's quite nice. Um, and they do recap it in the um, the show, but it, it needs to really be worked around. Like if you're gonna have a kickoff match, don't make it like a either make it like a non sequential tag team match similar to what this was, um, and don't put titles on there. And I think they've learned that. At one point, they were putting, like, Intercontinental Championship on there, United States Championship on it, and all these things that didn't really matter at the time. And that was a couple, like, for the last year. Um, and finally, they're kind of waking up and realizes people actually want to watch the championship matches. They don't want to see a kickoff show have it. So maybe they're doing it better. Um... I also like to see the kickoff, kickoff matches matter in the show. Like, if you're going to have tag teams, make it a number one contenders match for the tag team titles. Or a singles championship similar to that. You know, uh, just make it number one contenders. Because this way, you kind of build up a chance for this, for the next pay-per-view. Someone to see, um, if you're in the crowd, just so well, you're not sitting there being bored waiting for the show to start. And, you can kind of work with the kickoff match a little bit better than what they have. I don't know. Maybe they just don't want to waste their time. Anyway, uh, the kickoff match was fine. Moving on. Um, so the first match of the actual show um, was Kevin Owens and Ryback uh, for the Inter Intercontinental Championship. This match... <sighs> I'm not going to say it was bland, because it wasn't. It was pretty good for the most part, but could have been better, and it wasn't. Um, I think this has largely to do to the fact that, that Ryback's never been really great as a wrestler, in my opinion. And I've seen some other people do the same thing. Like they don't. His wrestling style is not very great. It's okay. It's not great, though. Um... Kevin Owens is obviously great in the ring. He's proven that day in and day out. And uh, this match doesn't end on a finisher, which is very rare to see for a championship match. Usually a finisher is involved. And the way it ended was Ryback got in his... Sh they were saying it was his shoulder... It was really his elbow. At one point, he screamed at the ref, Ref, my elbow! And then Kevin Owens, without a hitch, said, Shut up! It was great. <laughs> but they were, like, the announce team was just saying, It was his shoulder, his shoulder, his shoulder's hurt. He uh, Can he do the shell shock and all that stuff? And clearly he could. I mean, even with pain in your shoulder, at least in my experience, it doesn't hurt to lift a person off the ground. Or lift anything. The only reason it'll hurt is when you're moving it like around or some way, or you hit something with it. So at least that's my experience. I've I have been hit in the shoulder before. It hurts, but it doesn't hurt as bad as they're making it out to be. Um, and proof positive that Ryback's done this multiple times before. So. He lifts up Owens, not once, but I think two different times getting ready for Shell Shock, which Owens counters both of them. The first time, I don't remember what happened because it was so early on. Um, the first time was not, 
I think it was just a counter straight up. Uh, but the second time that it happened, it was uh, countered into a roll-up pin. Owens wins the title. I kind of thought that was okay. Um, the match was solid outside of a few he here and there misses. Um, it just wasn't enjoyable, though. And I, I could see why it was so early in the card. It just wasn't that enjoyable. And that also bring, Even though Kevin Owens won, won it, and most deservingly, because he's really good in the ring, i like to see him hold on to the title. I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to have... A, I'm sure they're going to have a rematch, but I don't know if it's going to be in the next pay-per-view, which I believe is Hell in the Cell, or not. I, I don't know. Um, so we move on to another less interesting match. Ziggler versus Rusev. This match, why is it still going? Why is this feud still going? This feud should have died a long fucking time ago. It was great to see it when it first started. Then Rusev got injured. And then Ziggler got injured. It's now the end of summer, since this feud has happened. It started at the beginning of summer, I believe. No, pretty much in May. It was supposed to be for Elimination Chamber. That was when the feud was supposed to start. And it never got started. Until SummerSlam. It wasn't good. It, 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 SummerSlam was kind of a nice way to blow it off, but they didn't blow it off. They kept it going. And Ziggler wins this match. Uh, the match wasn't interesting. I'm, I'm, I, I'll have to admit, I was watching the football game over it because it happened at the same time. And I just didn't care who won or lost. I, um, I guess I'm glad for Ziggler. I don't know. Um, it just wasn't worth watching. Um... Especially when the buildup of this particular match was going on to the show, Ziggler was doing some heel style things, you know? Um, it was weird. And I guess this has been going on for a while, because a lot of. He's been acting like a heel in this whole feud, and he's supposed to be the babyface. Um, Lana is nowhere to be found because she had surgery on her wrist. Uh, I think it was this hand. Um, um, because she got it broken or injured on a uh, WWE live show that wasn't televised. Uh, I don't know what the whole thing that happened there, um, nor do I kind of care at the moment. She wasn't at Raw for the next couple of weeks. Um, and Rusev was making fun of her because she had all that happen to her. Ziggler comes back, super kicks Rusev, done. And the next week... While Rusev's in a match with Cesaro, I think it was, and it was last Monday, um, lo and behold, here comes Ziggler giving a gift to Summer Rae. Why? I have no clue. I... I why? <laughs> she's supposed to be a heel. And she's supposed to act like a victim. Because the whole storyline up to this point was that... Dolph was cheating on Lana um, with Summer Rae when Summer Rae is cheating on Rusev, which is really stupid. They really didn't give this whole feud thing a chance. Um, it, it just got less and less interesting. And with the gift to Summer Rae and then Rusev getting ballistic on that, and then all of a sudden he turns around and gets super kicked in his ma after the match is over that he's in with, by uh, Ziggler, and that's how Raw's part of it ended. Now we have this match, which I literally did not give a fuck who won. In fact, all I want is this feud to end. I, I really don't care. <laughs> I I it's not Rusev's fault. It's not Ziggler's fault. It's just the m this whole feud should have ended way back. Probably SummerSlam is where it should have ended if it ever got started. You know, and 
this this doesn't seem like it ended. It just it doesn't seem like it's going to end. So, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that that match was boring. So we go on to the next match, which was for the tag team championship: the New Day versus the Dudley Boys. Which, by the way, I'm so glad to see the Dudley Boys back. Um, because we need a good tag team to come back after we lost Tyson Kidd and Cesaro's tag team. Oh, man. Same with the Usos. So that was another one we lost because of injuries. Um, Dudley Boys defeated the New Day by disqualification. Um, now, I'm not saying that they didn't use a table, but for the disqualification, the table wasn't used. Um... This match was pretty good. It was interesting to watch um, a veteran team like the Dudley Boys still put up like a fighting chance, like literally able to still hang around with the newer generation. And the New Day, they are still going with this um, with the save the tables thing. It was it was really nice to see because it was. You had two different types of personalities in terms of teams playing out, and it seemed perfect. It works. It works fantastically. Problem is, this ended in disqualification, and it shouldn't have. It should have been Dudley Boy's win, because they hit the 3D on, I believe, Kofi. And as they're pinning, Xavier Woods interferes, hits, I believe it was Devon, in the back of the head, disqualification ring the bell. At the end of the match, uh, the New Day get a table, and they were going to use it on the Dudley Boys, which would have been interesting, considering that they were in Save the Tables thing. Um, only for Dudleys to get the upper hand, send up Biggie and Kofi, if Xavier Woods didn't notice it, turns around gets 3D'd into a table, um, which is probably the best thing that happened in the whole match. Um, I'm still one of those people that doesn't like the New Day. Um... Although the gimmick's getting better. It had to take time to get that gimmick better. But it's annoying now. Um, it, it's just not a gimmick I like. I, I don't know why I don't like it. It seems like a gimmick I could go behind. But it just it doesn't feel right. Like I'm looking at like Kofi Kingston. And this is the one that's still, like, I can never see him as a heel. It doesn't look him. Um, I could see Big E becoming a heel. I could see Xavier Woods being a heel. But I just can't see Kofi. Kofi, especially when it comes to, like, the TV show Swerved, uh, he doesn't act like it. And then, you know, of course, you have um, Xavier Woods doing his video game show on YouTube. He's not acting like a heel, you know? It's just stuff like that where they break kayfabe and kind of ruin their own character. Um, nothing against the guys. I'm sure they're great performers. It's just that they don't feel right when they break their character for their shows that they put on the WWE Network or YouTube. That aside, um, this match was great. Uh, I just wish it didn't end in DQ. This is a match that... If you're going to give Legends uh, a title match, you better have them win it or get screwed over in certain ways. And in this case, two of the matches in Night of Champions had Legends. And neither of them won the belt. You see my problem? And I'll get back to the Sting match, because yes, he did lose. I'll get back to that, though. Um... The Dudley Boys, they won their match by by a disqualification. They left walking out of the ring looking like they were victorious, but they didn't get the titles, which means they're going to set up another championship match. It's it's more than likely going to happen. Whether it happens on Raw or at Hell in a Cell, I don't know. I doubt it will happen at, on Raw, so they'll probably sell it for Hell in a Cell. Um, so we move on. Uh... To Charlotte versus Nikki Bella for the Divas Championship. This match wasn't that great. Not because of Charlotte. It's mainly because of Nikki. The Bellas aren't that great. 
they're okay in the ring, but they're not that great. I don't, I don't see why the WWE pushes them at all. Um, this feud kind of started a long time ago, but it, it kind of ultimately happened within the last, I want to say, three weeks. That's when it really started. Um, Charlotte won the Beat the Clock Challenge to get a shot at the D Divas Championship at Night of Champions. Um, at the same time, Nikki was promoting the hell out of uh, her many days streak of holding the championship that she's going to break the record within two weeks. So Charlotte comes out, I think with a week left, and says, I have a match with you next Monday for that Divas Championship. Um, so you may not be able to break that record that AJ Lee has. And I, sh I knew that she wasn't going to win. And here's how. One, there was no stipulations going against it. So D Bella Twin Magic is going to happen. And I knew it was going to happen. Because it did happen. Um, and Charlotte did the same thing that happened with Paige. Uh, like a couple months earlier. Turned over Brie. Pinned her. Thought she won the title. Only to find out that it was Brie. And not Nikki. Therefore it ends via disqualification. I hate those finishes. This finish is old. It's so old. They've done it before in the past. It wasn't that great back then. And now they're using it more now. And for fuck's sake. Stop fucking using it. It's not fun. It feels wrong. You're robbing your audience and everything. Just to reverse the decision. So that way Nikki Bella can break that record that AJ Lee has. Only because she married fucking CM Punk. I knew that was what would happen. And everybody did. Um, those who thought that Charlotte was going to take this title. I'm sorry. It was. I could see and predict it a mile away. Nikki was going to retain. Um, but we did have a plus coming out of that. Stephanie McMahon came out and said. She still has her match at Night of Champions. Um, for your title. And in that match. If. Nikki Bella were to use twin magic, which means she can't be disqualified. If she were to get disqualified, if she were to get count outed, or any other like BS reason for her to retain, she would not retain. It would be given to Charlotte. And so she had to legitimately do the match herself. She had no friends in that respect. She could not win. And sure enough, Charlotte wins with uh, figure eight. Um, legitimately clean, and Charlotte's the new Divas champion. Um, this is a thing that was a week too late. They should have stopped that record oh, a long time ago. Uh, in fact, I think they should have stopped it way back in WrestleMania. Because I think at that point, Nikki Bella hadn't defended that title for at least 90 days. She just held it. I really think that they got rid of this whole rule that you're supposed to defend the title within 30 days each month. Basically, within a month. I think they just said, fuck that rule. Because after Brock Lesnar did it, like he would have like four months where he didn't wrestle with that belt on the line. I think it was fair game for everybody. And I feel that's wrong. I feel that's very horrible. It's very wrong, and it takes away the integrity of the championship. On top of which... Um, it wasn't just that. It was also like um, Rusev when he had the United States title. Before he took on Cena, he hardly ever defended that title. He won it from Sheamus, held it, hardly ever fucking defended it. You see? Um, it, it just really wasn't. It, it took away the integrity. Now, Cena getting that title from Rusev and putting some integrity back into it helped the United States Championship be more prestigious than it was at that point. It was one of the best things they could have done to save that title. It was be it, it suddenly the United States title became more prominent 
than not just the World Heavyweight Championship, but the Intercontinental. That's how prestigious it got because Cena held it. No one cared about who was in Intercontinental Championship anymore. No one cared if Seth Rollins was going to screw his way to keep his fucking World Heavyweight title. It was one of the weirdest things. Now, that being said, Cena did hold hold on to that title too long, and he had some fantastic fucking matches. And I mean fantastic A-plus matches ever since holding that. And these people that think that he sucks, have you not watched the last few months he's held that fucking title? Here's the thing. A lot of people say he buried Kevin Owens. A lot of people say he buried Sami Zayn and Neville and all these things. He didn't bury a single one of them. In fact, he let them go. And he's, the only reason he won was because it was last minute. He could have lost in any of those fucking matches. And it's proof positive if you look, watch the three Kevin Owens matches. He lost the first one, which wasn't for the title. He went to the second one, which I believe was for the title. And, lo- and he won that one. And then the third one, he won legitimately clean. And all three of them were freaking fantastic match of the year type matches. So, I'm just saying. The last few months for Cena have been fantastic when it came to those matches. But, I digress. Um... The Divas Championship now may have some prestige with Charlotte being in control of it. Whether it gets defended every single month, I don't know. Um, I I take Nikki Bella's title reign of 295 days very loosely. I, I like to put the asterisk that she only defended it a few times. Um, it, it's not like AG Lee, because I think AG Lee defended it every single fucking month leading up to beyond WrestleMania 30 uh, where she dropped it to Paige and that's what I'm talking about it's like it it lost its luster because Vicky wasn't defending it as often as she should have um, that aside um, the match was rather okay um, Charlotte was a better competitor in that match and deservedly won So, congratulations to Charlotte coming from NXT and now in the WWE winning the Divas Championship. She deserves it. So, um, that's the first title change we have. That's the first title change for the women's division in a long time. There was... It needed to be dropped about 100 days ago, but we didn't get that. So, we move on to... The Wyatt Family versus Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and their mystery partner. Now, going into this match, the Wyatts bring out a new character, bring Braun Strowman. And he was devastating. He was flipping devastated, and he looked it. So, they had everything, they had had the fucking edge over freaking Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. There was nothing that was going to stop him. So, they build this match where it would be 3v3. And Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns couldn't find a mystery partner. Um, so they were talking to Randy Orton. Only to find uh, to have the Wyatts take him out. Um, they had, I think it was Jimmy Uso. Because he was his, I think it was Jay Uso was the one that's injured. And he gets taken out. Um, so... The Wyatts think it's going to be 3v2 by the time they reach the champions. Last Monday, though, Roman Reigns and Ian Edwards announced that they did have find a partner, but they weren't going to reveal it until Night of Champions. So there was speculation on who was going to be the third person. A lot of people said it could be a legend. Um, a lot of people are thinking uh, an NXT rookie. Um, someone with some power to stop Strowman because Reigns and Ambrose couldn't do it. They've tried and they just couldn't get him down. So the speculation and this was kind of a mess up also by WWE.com at the time. They had released an image where Baron Corbin was the mystery person and only to remove it within I think it was within the hour that it was posted and made as a mystery. So there was thoughts that 
Baron Corbin would be rung up from NXT um, and be the special partner. Um, I was thinking it was going to be him. It seemed fitting considering his finisher is called End of Days, and this whole match was billed as the end of the uh, end of like the start of the apocalypse or something like that, and the end of the lives of Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. It, it seemed like the perfect idea. It's either that or you're going to have Eric Rowan come back from his injury. Or possibly um, another wrestling legend. And man, my hair got all messed up because I did that. There we go. Um, no one, I don't think, guessed. Right. I don't think anybody did. Because um, the mystery partner turned out to be Chris Jericho. Of all fucking people. And then I'm going to fix my mic here. Um, of all fucking people, Chris Jericho. Chris... Jericho. I, I don't know what to say. I have no idea what to say about that. It, it, it's... I don't think it was the right choice. Um, it, it didn't seem like it fit. I mean, I get that Jericho had some heat with Bray Wyatt early on but eh like he was the one person that I, I would have never guessed for this match um, especially going against Strowman who really has pushed Reigns and Ambrose down you would expect maybe possibly Great Collie or someone tall and powerful brooding you know, you can see maybe Baron Corbin being in this match. You can possibly see Samoa Joe or someone in the NXT roster that can possibly take out someone as powerful as him. But they didn't do any of that. They just said, Chris Jericho. You know, um, it was a surprise, but it was a lackluster surprise. It really, it didn't help Dean Ambrose or Roman Reigns. It was a failure. Of a choice. Um, and it showed because they lost. And it was because of Jericho. <laughs> um, Strowman not only took him out. But he made him submit. Knocked him out. And then they took. They made Jericho heal. by walking Because he walked and bumped into Ambrose. And kept walking away. Now. Of all the choices you could have had, you chose Chris Jericho, who, given not condensing his uh, abilities in the ring, not taking away any of his championship reigns or anything like that, but honestly, he cannot take on Braun Strowman. There's just no fucking way. That's... That's way too much of a hill, especially for a mid-card match that this is for a tag team match. And the way they're building it is like a Shield 2.0 kind of idea. So you're expecting some dominance, and there's no dominance. You, you took away your opportunity to bring some type of dominant person to help you. And you got Chris Jericho, who isn't the most dominant person ever. Yeah. As soon as he was announced, I lost complete interest in this match. I'm not saying anything about the other competitors. I was just like, I know who's going to win. It's gonna, They're going to put over Braun Strowman because it's Chris Jericho and he puts over new talent. And that's it. I didn't care how it ended. I didn't care how the match went. I like that Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose were starting to get an upper hand on Strowman. But I knew what was going to happen. It was so blatant. It just like, meh. I knew. It was so predictable at that point. So, yeah. 
a little bit disappointed with this match. They could have done it a whole lot better, and they could have put Chris Jericho in a whole different situation at another time. They didn't need to have him at Night of Champions. So, that match, it was good. Um, you had some great talent, and they did very well. It's just, it lost its interest suddenly, because it felt like all of it was taken away because they put Jericho in it. As the mystery partner. They hyped that bitch up, and so all the hype just didn't please anybody. So we move on. Um, next match was Seth Rollins versus John Cena for the United States Championship. And John Cena wins. That's it. Match was just as solid as uh, every time. That, it was pretty much a rematch of SummerSlam. <laughs> it was almost the same. Outside of, I don't think Cena used the Springboard Stunner this time. He did use the Code Red. Um, and this time Cena won. Legitimately. Um, Seth tries to take his world title and run away. Cena stops him, FU's him on the, uh, well, FU, a.k.a. Attitude Adjustment. I still call it the FU because that's what I seen it called back in 20, uh, 2003, <laughs> you know, it, when he was starting, you know, <laughs> so it's a little off. But, um, yes, yeah, Cena hits his Attitude Adjustment on, um, on Rollins on the mat, sends him back in the ring, waiting for Sting to come in. Sting comes in. Being really dominant early on, then he gets pushed into the Spanish announce table for the world title match. And you can tell he's fucking hurt. This is about five minutes in. Rollins plays like he's going to run away, only to see that Sting's hurt. Um... And, I mean, Sting's hurt badly. You could see his arm, I think, right behind his arm on this one. Uh, it was starting to bruise. You could see the middle of his back had a massive bruise. I, the commentator says he might have hit his back of his head on uh, one of the announce table's uh, TV monitors. Overall, it, it just... Oh. Sting lost because he looked fucking hurt. And at one point in the match, he collapsed. And he couldn't... He couldn't do anything for a while. So they stopped the match temporarily to see if he can continue on. And he did. He com he continued on. And he locked uh, Rollins into the... Uh, Scorpion Deathlock had him in there. Uh, Rollins tried to pedigree him, only for Sting to counter, put him back into the Scorpion Deathlock, only for Rollins to counter and put him in a pin and win one, two, three, I believe. And that was it. My problem with this match is it happened immediately after Cena destroyed Rollins. And Rollins acted like he couldn't go on. It, it, it's, he was selling it like he couldn't literally do any more damage. He was out of gas. And so they had this next match with Sting immediately after. And then suddenly one move just kind of destroyed the match. It took away its energy because Sting got hurt. And you can tell he got hurt. He didn't look the same after he got pushed into the announce table. He couldn't stand up for very long. Um, whether it was he was exhausted already at this point, because he is about 50 plus years old, um, or if he was straight up injured, I don't know. But at the same time, you could tell it. You could tell that he was hurt. Um... And Rollins won clean. There was no disqualification or anything. There was no interference. He won clean. So as Sting left, Rollins is celebrating, and all of a sudden you hear Sheamus' music. He is going after the title. He's going to put in the money in the bank case, which I'm actually kind of hoping that Sheamus took it, because even though I'm not a big fan of Sheamus, 
I don't want Rollins holding the WWE Championship anymore. I'm tired of seeing him because it's every. It seems like every match he's in, he does the same fucking thing. And I, and this is nothing new to his character. He's done it before. But the thing is, is that having him as a heavyweight champion and act like a complete coward as heavyweight champion and then bill him as the man or the future of the WWE is sickening. Um, it makes him less credible. I mean, John Cena beat him for the United States title tonight. And at that point, he was credible there because it was a clean finish. For Sting not to win it, is amazing for Seth Rollins. But at the same time, he tried to leave that match. He tried to go via countout. He could have done a whole lot of other things. He could have got himself DQ'd by Cena and Sting just to retain both of his titles. He had every advantage with him. And he didn't use it. It was just like, if you're going to act this disqualification type character or this cheap finish where... You technically lost, but at the same time, you retained your title, a dusty finish. Or something like that. At least keep doing the part. Or you just don't do it. And he continues doing the same part, but it feels very bad. Like, the way he does it is wrong. I don't know. I, I really don't like Seth Rollins' current character. I don't like him as a heel um, right now. Uh, he was a better heel when he was with the Shield, and they were a heel stable. Um, overall, the Sting match was lackluster, and it took away the energy when Sting got injured, and you could tell he was injured. Um, Sheamus coming down, try, cashing it, he was going to cash in his money in the bank to t take out uh, Rollins because he broke, kicked him, he wants to pin him, get that title. I was hoping for the best, only for Kane to return in his mask and gear. He's no longer corporate Kane to interfere and stop that from happening, which, okay, fair enough. Um, sucks, because now Rollins has a title for another month, but he's going to go against Kane, because Kane comes in, choke slams Rollins, then as Sheamus was trying to say, do it again, do it again, he gets choke slammed by Kane. Kane then looks back over at Rollins and tombstones the son of a bitch. Now, that's great heat for Kane. And I like the old Kane with his mask on. Now they've turned Kane to a complete face. Great. Best way to work it. But my problem with this whole thing is, is that this thing could have ended a long time ago. Uh, Rollins shouldn't have the title anymore. I I'm still waiting for him to drop that title. He's held it for too long. He's worn out his welcome holding this title for too long. Honestly, I know a lot of I might get some flack for this. Cena should be having that championship the way he's been going. Sorry. Uh, it's either Cena or you give it to somebody else that's more worthy of it. And right now, there isn't anybody on the roster. Outside of Dean Ambrose... Um, Reigns, oh, I know a few friends of mine that want Reigns to have that title. He's not ready. Um, I don't see him getting that title shot for a while. He, he, it's too early for him. Um, he just isn't backed up enough with the fans. He may never get a chance. We'll never find out. Cesaro is another person that I would think should, because he's not getting a push that he should have been getting. Kane getting the return, that's great. You get a cheap pop from the return, but uh, I don't want to see him going to the title. What I'd like to see is freaking Brock Lesnar come back. Wait a minute. He is coming back. For Hell in a Cell. In a Cell. With The Undertaker. See, that's the news that happened today that I'm more hyped about than the rest of freaking Night of Champions. The next pay-per-view is Hell in a Cell, and they already announced that he's taking on the Undertaker. Brock is taking on the Undertaker in a cell. 
I'm hyped and yet scared at the same time. There's a big reason why I'm scared of this. The last time these two were in a cell, Brock not only fucked up the finish, but it was a bloody mess. And I mean a bloody fucking mess. I don't know. I don't know if I want to see this. Part of it is because Taker accidentally bled, like, bladed himself improperly and his blood was coming out pretty bad. Or what, I don't know. But it was a bloody fucking mess. Brock won it. I don't know. Um, obviously, I can make a few predictions of what the matches are going to be. There's probably going to be a rematch for the Divas Championship. There's going to be a rematch for the Intercontinental Championship. There's probably going to be a rematch for the United States Championship on Raw. Um, because I don't think they, Rollins wants to go double duty a second time. Because I know damn well he's going to have a match with Kane at Hell in a Cell. Probably inside a cell. And probably for <laughs> Taker and Brock. Um, Dudley Boys are probably going to get a rematch uh, for those tag team belts because they won, but by a disqualification. And so I'm already predicting what the card is going to be, and it's probably going to be a Ziggler Rusev match. And there's, that's it, you know? The, the match is going to be eerily similar to what we watched tonight. It's one of those things where some of the people that won tonight won. Deservingly, and some people that did win that shouldn't have won. You know, um, Rollins should have lost the title to Sting. Either that or lost to Sheamus. Um, then Kane should have returned and started this feud with Rollins holding him off the title. Um, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose should have found a better partner. They would have had a better, I believe. That Chris Jericho was kind of not a good choice. Um, obviously, they're gonna that feud's gonna continue. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, what do I give this pay per view? Seven. Matches were somewhat decent, enjoyable. Not all of them. Some of them were kind of boring and lost interest near the end of it. Um, which is really the Sting versus Rollins match and the Wyatt and Shield 2.0 match. Uh, that's where it lost its real interest near the end. Uh, and of course, Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev had no be nowhere being in this. It just really fell out of place. Uh, the good matches were the tag team matches, and uh, I believe. Cena match was really good. Uh, it was very eerily similar to SummerSlam, and that was a good match up till the end of that one. Um, those were good matches. Somewhat okay matches was the Dudley Boys versus New Day, um, and Kevin Owens and Ryback. It's a seven. It's average. Um, and I, you might say that's a little high for average. You might think it's a six instead of, and it could be a six. But I, I'm gonna make it a seven because I'm gonna be a little generous and said that they had some good surprises that. No one quite expected to see. The Kane thing was a big one that no one expected at all. And, of course, J Chris Jericho returning. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and, uh, stay tuned because I I did do some other things. Like, um, I'm going to put a little update to this on what I've been doing. Um, I do plan to do a review of Metal Gear Solid Five. Um to talk about it at least I'm not going to review it as most reviewers do it I'm just going to talk about it and talk about what other reviewers that I've seen are saying about it um, and give my little two cents on that and on top of that I'm also <laughs> going to get another loot crate I told you I wasn't going to get one but I bought some more I'm just waiting for them to ship take this long time um, as we get closer to November um, BlizzCon's coming around the corner, uh, around November, the start of November. I've already purchased something from them that is supposed to deal with that uh, BlizzCon, and so until that gets shipped, um, 
you should expect a review on that. So I hope you enjoy uh, this video, and uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I enjoyed feedback, and I enjoyed more followers as I continue. Um, please follow my Twitter in the description below, and uh, if you want to see me live stream, I sometimes stream from time to time. Usually it's World of Warcraft, but I sometimes will stream a different game if I feel like it. Sometimes Hearthstone, sometimes Mortal Kombat X, because I have it on PC. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all. Later. Good night.